Red meat is one of the most controversial foods in the history of nutrition. There's people that say it's absolutely essential for health, and then there's others who say it completely destroys health. Now in this video, we're gonna take an objective look at the current evidence, and let me tell you that there's people who are definitely wrong. A 200 gram, seven ounce portion of raw ground beef, which is about 10% fat, contains 40 grams of high quality protein, 25% uh, and 18% of the RDA for vitamin B3 and B6 respectively, 37% um, of the RDA for vitamin B12, which is uh, unattainable from plant foods. We have to get that from animal food sources. Uh, it get 12% of the RDA for iron, uh, this is high quality heme iron, which is, uh, we know is absorbed much better than iron from plant foods. Uh, it contains 32% of the RDA for zinc and 24% of the RDA for selenium. However, 200 grams of ground beef also contains about 350 calories, 20 grams of total fat, 8 grams of saturated fat, and 130 milligrams of cholesterol. Now, whether the fat and cholesterol uh, is detrimental to health um, is still widely debated, but probably not. In any case, it's clear that red meat is nutritious, but also high in fat and therefore calories, which could be problematic in a society like ours that consumes excess calories already. Okay, so now that's out of the way. We must also first acknowledge that red meat comes in different forms and it's not what it used to be. Throughout evolution, our ancestors ate meat from animals that roamed free. They ate it as it was, you know, nothing fancy. That meat is quite different to what we often eat today. Aside from the minor nutritional differences between grass-fed and grain-fed, for example, uh, the main issue is that we cook and prepare meat differently, eating a lot of processed meat. And that is meat that has been smoked or cured with nitrates and other compounds. Uh, so foods like sausages, ham, and bacon, etc. So red meat and processed meat are quite different in their nutrient content and subsequently different in their effects on health. Now cancer is uh, the big issue and there has been a lot of observational research done in this area. Very large and well controlled observational studies that follow hundreds of thousands of people for many years tend to find a hazard ratio of about 1.2 for red meat and cancer. So that means that a 20% increased risk comparing the biggest meat eaters versus those who eat the least. So this is actually only a 0.2 fold average increase, which is very low. Now there is a strong possibility this risk if it is indeed true, can be offset entirely by dietary interventions that reduce risks, such as not overcooking, a high fruit and vegetable intake, uh, etc. Also note that this is an association, so it hasn't been shown through intervention studies, nor is the cause actually known. So we can't say for sure all red meat causes cancer. What we do know is that the association between processed red meat and cancer is much stronger and much more consistent than the link with unprocessed red meat and cancer. And this particular association increases with the more you eat. So the more processed red meat you eat, uh, the greater the risk. And there, more importantly, there is a plausible mechanism by which the ingredients in processed meat, particularly the nitrates and the cooking methods could cause certain forms of cancer, uh, in particular colon cancer. At least that's what has been observed in test tube and animal studies. For this reason, the World Health Organization has classified processed meat as a group one carcinogenic to humans. So you can see that they say, um, this category is used when there is sufficient evidence of carcinogenicity in humans. So in other words, there is convincing evidence that the agent causes cancer. The evaluation is usually based on epidemiological studies showing the development of cancer in exposed humans. So, so note that group one refers to the strength of evidence, not the level of risk it poses. We can note that for this question, the World Health Organization has estimated processed meat portions should be smaller than red meat, but consumption of red meat has not been established as a cause of cancer. So processed meat appears to increase cancer risk, particularly colon cancer, in what appears to be a dose response relationship, which means uh, the more processed red meat you eat, uh, the greater your cancer risk, and if you barely eat any, then it won't really increase your risk. Uh, at all. Pretty much all experts uh, agree on this. But unprocessed red meat appears to be very low risk, if at all. Uh, it's potentially only a problem if you eat uh, super large quantities of it, or you don't participate in other healthy lifestyle aspects that would offset 
that cancer risk. So you can see that it's very, uh, it's very complicated. There's lots of different variables. Lastly, I wanna to touch on heart health and type two diabetes risk. Now in a huge review of 20 studies that included a total of over a million individuals, uh, processed meat was associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease and diabetes. However, no association was found for unprocessed red meat. Now in the, in the EPIC study, which was a very large observational study um, of almost 500,000 people, Processed meat increased the risk of death while no effect was seen for unprocessed meat. The latest meta-analyses also show this to be the case, with processed meat linked to poorer health outcomes, but not unprocessed red meat, which also makes sense given what we've seen with cancer risk. So it's crucial when we have this conversation to distinguish between processed and unprocessed meat because the two can have vastly different effects. Now keep in mind the beneficial nutrients of red meat, and you can start to see how the question of is red meat good or bad for you really depends on you know, the individual, um, what type of meat they eat, uh, the quantities they eat it, uh, how they cook their meat, what other foods they eat, and how they live their life. So those who say uh, high red meat intake is perfectly safe are wrong. Uh, they should rethink their position. Likewise, those who say that red meat in any quantities is harmful to health are also wrong and they too should rethink their position. You know, I really don't like the term moderation, but the reality is that moderation alongside context uh, is key with everything that we eat and red meat is no exception to this rule. Thanks for sticking with me to the end. If you enjoyed this, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the Authority Nutrition YouTube channel uh, by clicking the big red button below the video and that way you can catch all our other videos like this one as they are released.